Hey, hey, hey. Everyone. Hey, well, um, thank you so much for, for for jumping on the chat. Um, I'm really excited about this uh, this this talk. Like, I used to work for Glovo, which Delivery oh Hero has God. bought, uh, and uh, I remember the engineering team spoke very highly of the Delivery Hero uh, engineering team. So, really cool to to to, to speak and hear uh, your session today, Andre. So, with that said, I'll just give it over to you. Thank you. And yeah, as it already said, I am Andre. I am a principal software engineer and delivery hero. And if you would have any questions, you can easily contact me on any of these uh, social networks and ask your questions or just connect, say hi. So let's get started. Uh, in delivery hero today, we deliver more than 10 million orders per day. And we do this in 70 plus countries. We do this worldwide. We do this 27, uh, 24 per seven. And it wasn't been like this in 2020, uh, because when Corona breakout happened, we grew exponentially and we were not ready for this. And we had a lot of incidents uh, which were related to our inability to scale. And back then, like five years ago, our uh, CTO created this so-called Trollability Manifesto. It's public in the internet, you can easily find it. And one like bullet point of this manifesto is called We Design for Failure. It has multiple uh, mechanisms, but one of them is exactly load testing, the topic I'm going to talk uh, about today. And if you look at this, uh, you will find out that uh, what actually we aim during load testing, we want, for, uh, first of all, to test if we can scale uh, rapidly to 3x compared to our production load or to 4x during a longer period of time. We want to run it more frequent. I mean, this uh, slide is a bit outdated. Uh, currently, we have different requirements, but this, like, uh, just for your understanding what we wanted. And we also want to know to have realistic uh, patterns of our operations we want to test uh, in production. And we pass law test only if uh, our latency is under some specific thresholds and error rate as well. So back then, five years ago, it was completely manual process. And behind the gopher, you can see the list of uh, pages or report generated by humans. And uh, like it was 12 pages of Google Doc uh, with 20, 30 screenshots from different sources, from Datadog, from Grafana, from uh, CloudWatch and AWS. And it was only one uh, lot test run for one service. Back then, we were doing this uh, on bi-weekly frequencies, but right now we should do this uh, every week. And you can imagine uh, it's not scalable doing this manually. And right now in my tribe, we have 26 services, so you can imagine the amount of work needs to be done by the engineer. And yeah, so we uh, decided manual doesn't work and we embrace it automation. And our automation was achieved with uh, Templating, it was done in GoLang, and you can see uh, we have some uh, placeholders, and in these placeholders, you can easily embed some uh, already predefined data, for example, just date of the law test, or you can query our different data sources. And in this case, we query Grafana Cloud, we get some information about most, uh, about the country with most load we have in production. And then we extract this information, and we can add it to the document, and then we can extract throughput. Then we query load test, and then we can, you know, to uh, percolate and do some nice things. It's not only data, but we also can draw some charts in our document and so on and so forth. And most important part of any of our load test result is conclusion. And uh, like, even until months or two months ago, conclusions were looking like this. So we just uh, taking numbers from low test, from production, we're dividing, and then we say, okay, this is our multiplier, and almost that's all. The same for uh, error rate. So we just calculate and say, okay, our error rate was below 2%. 
And uh, despite the report itself, we have uh, reporting. So we report our results to different our systems for our CTO, for our directors, uh, vice presidents, for all our many people. And to do this evaluation, we again, we just compare if it's greater or less than some number. So it's very dumb, but it works. But uh, is this a masterpiece we created? I can say like five years ago, yes, it was a masterpiece, but uh, technology doesn't stay still. Technology evolves. And uh, rather than, you know, just to run from technology, we decided to embrace it and use AI. And I can clearly tell you using AI is easy. <laughs> These three lines of code is almost all uh, implementation we have. And uh, yeah, three lines of code, it's easy. But then we have challenges because this three lines of code doesn't do magic. You can call your AI model, you can uh, get some results, but to do this, you need to prepare a prompt. So you need to write a huge message, the detail, details describing AI, what you want from it. And the problem is that results inconsistent. Even you have the same prompt, you run it multiple times, results will be different because, uh, and results will be different between models, between runs, and results will degrade over time. And I'm not talking only about the cases when you have long conversation with AI. I mean, this is known uh, issue so far because when you have longer conversation, you're uh, using this context window too much and maybe I start to forget something, mixing something. In case we face it, it was actually um, we creating a chat, a thread with AI every time the new one we just sent, please, this is our information, please uh, do some evaluation based on this information. And after one week or two weeks of using, it changes, you know, drastically uh, the output. So sometimes it's very complicated. You need always to adjust your prompt. Um, what else? You have unavoidable limitations. I already mentioned this context window, so it's limited. Uh, you can't throw everything you have uh, to AI and uh, expect it solve all your problems. Another problem, hallucinations. And my favorite AI are talkative. They really like to write you a bunch of data. Uh, you didn't ask them about this. And even if you specify something saying, oh, please, uh, give me only one number. You will get this number, but it will be surrounded by multiple uh, paragraphs of the text. So to address some of these um, problems, what we decided, we decided to split our prompt into three parts. First part is the definition and requirements. This is the same definition and requirements we have in our reliability manifesto. Right now we call it engineering manifesto about load testing. What uh, multiplier do we expect from the, our load test? What our uh, thresholds for error rate? What our thresholds for latency? Uh, what the frequency of our load test? We give all this information to AI and then uh, we provide <clears throat> a list of data. And data consists of also two parts. So we give the production data because AI needs to compare with something. So we can say, okay, this is our production results. And based on this, please uh, calculate what should be our multiplier, what should be expected load from our uh, load test. And then we provide actually load test data. So almost the same as production, but uh, with more details, I would say. And then we have a most important part. This is the type of response. As I already mentioned, AI is very talkative. AI is hallucinating. So we need to set up it, uh, what we actually expect and in which format. And this is very sensitive uh, part. Any word to change here changes completely results AI gives you. So uh, talking about definitions and requirements, as I already mentioned, this is our uh, real requirements about what is load test. And I already mentioned like scalability, how many requests per 
minute or per second we expect. So we expect for one minute rapid uh, increase uh, up to 2x and so on and so forth. So we give all of this information, we give information about our SLOs, about our error rate. And then second part, uh, actual data. Uh, and uh, what data we, for example, uh, from production, we get throughput. So we need AI to know what is our current throughput. And uh, yeah, and then endpoints metadata. This one we using for, for AI to understand uh, the quality of our load test. As I already mentioned, uh, our load test should uh, test realistic scenarios, not just hitting a health endpoint one million times. This will work for sure. But uh, it should be realistic. So we say which exactly endpoint use it uh, in the production. And then uh, we provide what is data? So we give data about our memory consumption, CPU consumption, the latency we have during the load test, the error rate, the throughput we have, and again, endpoints metadata use it during this load test. And as I mentioned, this is the third part. This is very important one, the most important one, because it depends on how you specify this, you will give result. Uh, this very simplified, this is not actual what we were using, but this to understand you uh, what we request. So for example, we say uh, our, in our data, we provide timestamps in the Unix epoch and AI will use it in, you know, um, uh, result output, just printing these numbers everywhere. And this, then we say, oh, please translate it to UTC format, uh, human readable because we don't understand these numbers. We need some more uh, more understandable uh, time uh, times. And then we say, uh, this is my favorite, uh, please write a number uh, and then add your explanation. Why? It's very important because when you read multiple uh, reports every day, uh, the most important information you want to get uh, is like, what is multiplier? What is error rate? What is latency? And you want to find it in some specific place. You don't want to read hundreds of pages of document just to find one number. You want to know, to know on which page you will find this information and in which format it will be. Well, then we say, okay, please provide this information about multiplier, about error rate, throughput, uh, latency, any anomalies, and quality of the tests, and give you recommendations if you have any. And this is example response. I mean, as I mentioned, <laughs> yeah, it's talkative, and uh, I'm asking, please give me a number, and it doesn't give a number. It provides a huge um, recommendation about what is going on, but it's very good, actually. If you read it, it's super good because it uh, tells you what happened, what was uh, ramp ups in your law test? Uh, is it actually aligned with our uh, principles from the reliability manifesto and so on and so forth? So uh, this the same about error rate. It says, okay, it's under our expectation because it's very, very small one. Uh, about throughput, it says, okay, but in law test, you didn't reach your uh, multiplier of the law test. So you need to improve, you need to get more load. Response time. Uh, in our uh, reliability manifesto, we don't specify what expected uh, from our uh, latency from our services, but then it says, okay, it's under like 500 milliseconds and it should be fine and uh, so on and so forth. And uh, in the end, it gives some summary. And if you check, uh, it says, I couldn't give you any recommendations about CPU and memory because you didn't provide us information about CPU and memory. And this was from the previous runs. And then we added the information about memory and CPU. And uh, actually, we broke everything. Uh, what if and doubt using AI, uh, every time you modify your prompt, you should expect unexpected. <laughs> and the problem of this, because 
like uh, we have this unavoidable limitations, unfortunately. And if you look at this, um, uh, this is representation of data we generate during the load. This is, uh, you see a lot of data points, a lot of ports. This is another one. And if you look uh, uh, the example from the uh, above, it represents only 150 ports. But in our usual load test, when we generate real uh, multiplier load, it's 1,500. So when we generate this and when we feed all of this information to AI, this is uh, hundreds of thousands of numbers AI sometimes can't deal with because doesn't understand. And I believe at some point we just reached this uh, context window of information we can feed to AI. And it just, you know, started to pick information randomly. But what we did, uh, you need to structure your prompt better and you need to cut some data. And we did. After we removed some, uh, after we structured better our prompt and provided better information about what is the actual CPU consumption, what is the uh, per port, for example, uh, so AI started to give us very good uh, suggestions. It can clearly uh, uh, find outliners uh, in our CPU um, consumption. And one of uh, actually suggestions was, oh, maybe you have a problem with load balancer because definitely some of your pods receiving more uh, loads than it expected. And yeah, I mean, this is true. This is something we need to check. So conclusion, AI, uh, starting AI is very easy. As I mentioned, it's only three lines of code. Uh, it is helpful tool when you know how to formulate your request properly, but it might be unhelpful if you don't know how to formulate it properly. And yeah, uh, we are hiring. If you want to solve complex problems also related to AI, please uh, go ahead and uh, join us and yeah again if you still have any questions i'm please contact me on any of these social networks i'm open to answer anything thank you thank you so much uh Andrea, for this wonderful chat uh love the presentation like uh, i i i think you're probably a master coder and a slide designer uh, at least in another life um so we do have one minute uh left but uh the community has asked quite a bit of questions. So I'm going to pick um, one. So can AI help? Oh, I think this one was answered by the community. Um, well, somebody asked in the, in the chat in your presentation if you've tried like a structured outputs and did they help or hinder? Oh. Yes, as I said, in the third part, we try to ask AI to structure output, and sometimes it helps, sometimes not. I mean, it's very depend because even generating the da uh, data from um, our law test, you don't generate the same data every time. It's very different because you have different uh, time frame when you load law tests, you have different results of law tests, and AI interpreted it very differently. So sometimes it's complicated to do this. <laughs> but yeah, I believe we can uh, nail it down at some point. Nice. Well, um, I appreciate the candor. And um, one thing I do want to mention, uh, so Delivery Hero is definitely like, a, by the way, they haven't paid me to say that. Delivery Hero is definitely like a very, very cool place to work at. Uh, like I used to work at a place that a Delivery Hero bought. And um, I think if you're an engineer right now listening to this chat, like definitely go check it out. Like, um, yeah, really, really uh, exciting place uh, to, to, to build software. Now, we are getting close to the end of our first half. So I just want to say a massive thank you, Andrew, for uh, coming on uh, to you. this conference. Really, really enjoyed the session. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye, guys.